and Adam is a coach. He's a business coach, dear friend of mine. And, and whenever some of my clients have some really struggles with getting a hold of leads, selling leads, um, just basic struggles, advanced struggles in their business, Adam's the, go, the guy to go to. He, he's done it all. He knows a lot, a lot, a whole lot. So that's what's well. because I'm old now and shit. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you lost hair too. <laughs> <laughs> Adam, we wanted to talk about some type of um, program that you guys are probably more familiar with. And it's a lot of hype with it. And a lot of our clients have used it. And a lot of our clients love it and it's working. And a lot of our clients hate it. They don't even want to think about it anymore. Yeah. There's pros and cons to it. And, and I, I don't know, Adam for sure has some pros and definitely some cons for it. And I wanted him to discuss this with everybody. and and give you guys a special little gift as well too. So those of you who are here, congratulations, you made it. And those who are not, you're seeing this recording right now and shame on you for not coming. <laughs> you can't shame them already. <laughs> okay, go ahead, Adam. Um, well, I think if we're talking predominantly about the six week, we're talking about the gym launch model on the whole, yeah? Um, it's interesting, you know, I've been doing this for 22 years now to give some of you guys context. I've owned 11 different gyms. Um, I've coached thousands of fit pros now, um, especially when it comes to challenges. I mean, I brought out fitness contests and challenges program. The first one almost 11 years ago, you know, and we've sold two and a half thousand copies of that program. Um, and even back then there was a six week format within that product that I taught people how to run. Um, so it was interesting to see it, It's like a cycle, right? You guys see it in fashion. You see it in, in different industries, right? Like shit gets old, then they bring something new out, then it comes back again. And that's pretty much what's happened with the six week. I think the biggest change in the format of it is the, the free hook. You know what I mean? And you know that from a marketing point of view, I right, yourself, right? Advertise something for free and it's at least interesting enough for a lot of people to inquire. Right, which so from a marketing point of view, you want to get leads quickly. It is a great hook to get leads quickly. The difference may be, and I guess some of the pros and cons we'll talk about, and maybe some of the questions we'll get from everyone is are those leads quality? Is it worth going through the volume of leads to then sign up the number that you sign up to then convert on the back end? Right. Cause I think that's the biggest key that I see with all of these different types of promos is if you're not clear on the entire conversion process, right? It's so heavily loaded on the front end, right? Like you're going to get a massive amount of leads. You're going to do a massive amount of consults or orientations. It's very like buy or die, right? Compared to a normal consultation process, it's like, look, here's the deal. You either take it up and you're in or you're not right. So there's a bit of a burn and churn process, for the ones that um, can't do it, it's like, no. And then that's pretty much it for them, right? So those leads are now, they've said no to your business and they're gone. But once people start in the process, then what are you doing? One, to make sure that you get the highest conversion. Two, what are you doing on the back end to make sure that you're not getting hit financially? And I'll give you guys a great example. Um, most of you know probably who Sam Bakatar is. He's the one that really changed this with Alex, um, shit, probably six, seven years ago. And I had a client of mine that was working with him in this program and he almost went out of business from running this particular program. And the reason being is that the way that they structured the back end was, it wasn't very congruent. It wasn't very smart from a cash flow point of view. Reason being is that people would join the six week, they would pay the four to 600 bucks. On the back end, if they lost the weight, they would get given another six weeks of training for free. So from a cash flow point of view, that could either get their money back or they could do another six weeks of training for free, right? So if you look at the conversion of that, you made your four to 600 bucks on the front end. Now this person lost the weight, they go into another six weeks. So there's another six weeks, right? So we got 12 week conversion process right now before this person's paying any cash flow again, right? And then if they lose the weight the second time, they get another challenge. So you see groups of people who are getting challenged, challenge, and challenge, like doing, you know, 12 to 18 weeks worth of training for that initial $400, right? 
and it's been so long since they paid you any money that most of them don't even value what you offer anymore. So there was, you know, a lot of that going on for people for a while and that burnt a lot of people out that probably that last time when it was really big about seven years ago. Now, since Alex brought it back out with gym launch, they've got a little bit smarter with the conversion process, but it's still, oh, I see a lot of businesses. They, they love the upfront cash. It hits the greed button in terms of how many people I can get in the front door and make a hundred grand. I can make 60 grand on the front end. And I got clients of mine who have, you know, signed up 200 people on this promo within, you know, six weeks. I mean, the first time we ran it last year, November, I think we signed up close to a hundred in a four week period, right? So the upfront money is nice. It hits the greed button. But if you don't structure the back end properly, which I'll share with you guys in a little bit, a lot of businesses tend to discount on the back end because they don't want to give money back, right? So I'll just take $400 off my service or I'll discount my service by X amount a month to give you back your $400, right? And you even see a lot of people structure that from the beginning. They let people know if you lose the weight, then you can roll that into our membership afterwards. The biggest issue being is when you do that, you've now dropped your average dollar per sale. So the, when these people convert, they're now paying you less than everybody else pays. So your average dollar is less. So you've got more members, but you've got more members paying you less money, which is never a great thing for profitability of business. Does that make sense? Absolutely. I'm not, I got Neil Golly saying, um, too many bad leads make you bleed. Yeah. And I think, the biggest thing that I always look at with this, right, is that I want to leave a lead with a good impression. Like even if today is not the right time to make a buying decision for them, right? And there's lots of reasons, some of them valid, some of them bullshit, all right? But if I leave them with a good impression, maybe I'm always top of mind for these guys when they are ready or when they're talking to somebody else. With the six week, it's like, here's the offer, you can either take it or not. And once those people say no, there's never a great connection for me to be the solution for them in a future date because basically they can't take up my offer. So I'm no longer an option for them. So I think you got to be a little bit wary of that on the front end, especially because you've got such a high volume that the level of quality you can provide to each person. I mean, I see consultation processes going from 60 minutes to 40 minutes to 30 to suddenly you're talking to four people at once in 15 minutes. Like you can't tell me you're going to build a good connection with four people in 15 minutes at once, right? So that, that front end churn is, um, it's a thing that I've seen a lot of businesses and you probably see it right as well, right? They, when they remarket this the second time, it's never as high for most businesses because the leads have been burned or what probably a lot of you are facing at the moment is you go to launch your ads and there's another six gyms in a, in a four mile radius that are offering the same thing with the same ad format with the same short video ad um, everything's the same. So the market's getting burnt out. Yeah, they are so fatigued, so fatigued. It's ridiculous. And, and it doesn't do nothing but hurt cost per acquisitions. And at the same time, when you finally do get your lead, it's a little bit more harder to sell them this time just because of that offer. Yeah, well, they've just seen it, right? It's like anything. It's the same with 28 day challenges for a while. The same with all those things, right? When there's becomes marketing blindness to a certain offer. Do you know what I mean? It's like for a lot of people now, eBooks and downloads and stuff like they still work, but there's more of a blindness to that stuff now because people have seen it so often everywhere. So with the six week, and that's what I say to my clients who still benefit from it and still enjoy it, like ride it, ride it while you can because the front end hook is great, but we're very clear in the way that I teach them how to convert on the back end, All right, Which is something I'm happy to dive into with you guys now because You've got to make sure there's key things that you do along the way and that you set yourself up on the back end to make it successful long-term, not just short-term. Absolutely. Absolutely. I want to welcome Kevin. Thanks for coming. Um, Jay Dang, we all know him. I'm going to see Mr. You. Dang's up early too. Yeah, you're up early. Yeah, you damn, 6 a.m. <laughs> I got a guy named iPhone who's in here. Who are you, iPhone? And... Who else? Alex Price. How you doing, Alex? Awesome. Yeah, th thanks so much, Adam. Also, guys didn't know Adam is a, a professional business coach. He'll guide you along the way. I'll guide you to the door, and then you'll open it, and then he'll guide you what happens after that. 
<laughs> if you're willing to work for it. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about the conversion uh, because the thing you've got to look about with the way that the six week is structured and not, we're talking pros and cons here, right? I'm not saying that I'm for one way versus the other, but I want you to at least be aware of the things to take into account to make it successful. If you are going to run it, if you hate it and you don't want to run it, you don't have to worry about anything. Um, but in terms of what I always look for or what I teach my clients to do when they run this type of promo, right? Is that you got to be clear on how many intakes you're going to take. So the way that this works for most people is they might run the promo for a month, six weeks, right? Or they'll do a month and then they'll do the next month and the next month, right? If I'm constantly doing intakes on different weeks, I'm pushing out my conversion process, right? So I've got a group that's going to start in week one. They're going to end up finishing obviously in six weeks time, different to group two, different to group three, different to group four, right? So in terms of being organized, you've got to have a very clear and sometimes just a, an easy manual system to be able to know when those people are getting to certain points throughout the six weeks. If you're so focused on the front end and getting everybody started on the different intakes and you're not focused on when they get to week three, what's happening in the week three check-in, What's the conversation you're having on the week three check-in? Are you doing a, another body composition to check in where they're going in relation to their goal? Are you using that opportunity to present them with an offer to stay on in week three? Or are you waiting till week six because you don't really know which each group is until you're like, shit, this person's about to finish. And then I'm having a conversation with them about staying on. Makes sense. So you got to be really organized. You've got to make sure that if you are going to run different week intakes, that you've got some sort of a system to track where each person is and make sure that you're booking in those week three to week four check-in appointments. All right. Because what we've seen is that if you wait till week five or six to offer somebody an opportunity to stay on that conversion is never as good at all. Right. It's the same with the 28 day challenge. If you wait till the last week, you know, the last couple of days to talk to people or after they finish the 28 days conversions always shit. Um, so that's one of the biggest things that I see people do wrong with this format is that they're so focused on the front end that they forget about where people are on the back end and there's no follow up. There's no check in. There's no consistency in that process when they're leading people into the conversion, right? To stay on as a paid member, because at the end of the day, you want to have a successful business. You need more members paying you DD long term right? It's, it's not a tricky formula. So if you're always getting the money on the front end, but you're not converting the volume on the back end onto an ongoing direct debit, your business is always going to be like this, right? What can I bring in the front end? What can I bring in the front end? But the back end's dying. Um, in terms of an offer, right? Depending on where most of you are at. One of the things I would recommend to have in your business with anything that you're doing, if you don't have this yet, and look, some of you are they're different. Yeah, some are boot camp, some are PT, some might be small group. All right, always create a month to month and a 12 month rate. All right, I avoid doing things one, two, three sessions a week if possible, depending on your program. Obviously, with one on one or small groups, it's a little bit different. But the reason why I love to have a month to month rate and a 12 month rate, it allows me to position my office, it allows me to provide value to people who are ready to take action now. All right. And the thing that I love about the positioning of this when it comes to the six weeks is let's say somebody's paid us 400 bucks to come in the front end, right? If your program say normally $77 a week on a month to month rate, but if they commit to a 12 month rate, you bring it down to $57, right? But on 12 months, there's no suspensions, there's no holds, but they save over a thousand dollars a year. Cool. Following. All right. One of the things that we do to position this is look at week three or week four, we really want you to stay on. We really want you to think about this program long-term, even past the initial 20 pounds or 5% body fat or whatever your goal is for the program. How would you like to save a thousand dollars off our program? So rather than just getting your $400 back, we're going to give you over a thousand dollars back off our program. All right. If you jump into our 12 month program, Make sense? Yeah, All right. It's a tricky positioning for some people, but I'm giving them a thousand dollars off our program while I'm getting them to commit to a 12 month program on direct debit. And I'm not giving them their deposit back. 
Right, right. Right. So there's a perceived value of a thousand dollars, which is a legit perceived value based on them not paying 77 and paying 57. But in their mind, they're also committing to something for a lot longer. So that's where most of my clients have seen the biggest success. All right. When you try and roll the amount in based on what they lost or didn't lose and take off a weekly amount and then change it to that, like I'm, it's messy and it's ugly, right? And most people, if it's not clear and it is messy, it's a lot harder for them to make a buying decision. Right. Absolutely. I, I, I got um, with Neil Gottlieb who runs a, a 12 week program, right? And then he offers only two things. Is that right, Neil? Either it's eight months or 12 months. That's it. So obviously, yeah, you're getting them in the door with that 12 week. That's the front end hook. But you, you obviously are educating them that what they want to achieve, ain't gonna, they're not going to get it in, in those 12 weeks. They want, they're going to get it in a much more longer time frame. So uh, absolutely. Exactly. And look, the benefit of also presenting somebody with that at the halfway mark, all right, especially if you do another body comp or some form of a check-in, right, is that if somebody's achieved great results to that point, they're excited, they're pumped, and it's easier to them to get them excited about what they want to do longer term, right? If they haven't done well, we can give them a little bit of kick in the ass and say, well, look, obviously, this is the battle. This is why you're here. Let's commit to this journey long term. Right. And I can use the same hook and the same offer depending on the results because I've got data. I'm not just saying, Hey, we'd love to keep you here. Here's an offer. Right. I've got something tangible that I can talk to them about and present. And then the benefit of once I've done that around the week three, latest week four mark is that I've then got two weeks to follow it up. If I present it to them in week six, I've got what five days maybe to get an answer, right? And most of the time, if they're not already asking me about staying on at that point, I haven't done a good enough job. Right, right, absolutely. I, I see most of the success come from clients who are, that moment of excitement phase is so narrow, isn't it? And that's, and it gets more, even if they're getting outstanding results, it's that, that it gets narrow, narrow, narrow. So that you gotta catch them right in that momentum of emotion where they're, I'm seeing these results. Look at these arms. I'm seeing these big ass arms. And, and that's uh, definitely what all our women say for sure. Exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, cons. Right? We've talked about some of the cons in terms of the churn and burn on the front end. On the back end, I guess we've talked about things to be aware of when it comes to are you discounting, taking the price, are you taking the, the deposit off your normal rate? All right, because I see that often is I'll take the deposit off my normal rate and get somebody to sign up for 12 months. So I'm getting less money for the next 12 months, right? Which again, you got to be aware of that average dollar to sale. Just because it's nice that I'm not giving a refund, I don't know if I want to discount somebody's rate for another 12 months just to not give them the refund. All right, so for us, that's always something to keep in mind on the back end. Um, we talked about being organized, all right, and making sure that these people are getting what you would want your normal members to get. And I think that's the thing I love from most businesses who haven't run a lot of challenges or as they run more and more challenges, whether it's a 28 day, a 21 day, a six week, an eight week, a 12 week, whatever it is, right? If you haven't refined your process in terms of your onboarding, your systems, what you do in that initial phase of getting a client into your program, if you haven't refined that to a high level, right? So that people instantly know it was a great buying decision. They're excited about your program. They're excited that they finally found a place that that's right for them, that they get the support, the accountability, that the ongoing help. If you haven't refined that process, then use your challenge to do that, right? Structure what they get every single week to make sure that by halfway through that process, they are excited. They are thinking about staying on longer term. And the second part to that during that process what have you got? What are you saying? What are you putting in place to get them excited about why they want to be a part of your program longer term? I got that has to be the two focuses. I got something to say real quick. Um, sure. A client got a membership funnel and it's just a monthly membership. That's it. But he does something very, very strange on, uh, you know, the renewal date is normally on the 30th of each uh, you know, 30 days later, 30 days later. 
So what he does is on day 27, he gives them a next piece of, of, a, of a hook that keeps them beyond that renewal date. And then on day 57, he's emailing them, you know, twice a week anyway. But on day 57, he's giving them that extra, extra piece of hook that, that keeps them on. That, um, and that's a good one. I was thinking of that like, um, you know, like membership day 27, uh, they give them some type of incentive to keep them. And that keeps them beyond that. Like, I need to know what that is. What is that one thing? And then it keeps them beyond that, that renewal date. So that's, that's pretty smart. And a lot exactly. Of and look, I, I call it future casting. You know I mean? They have to be able to see themselves doing something in the future with you and they have to see the benefit of that. And if they can't see it, then their mind is, fixated on the 28 days on the six weeks on the 21 days right They've, that's their context that's their time frame right where we need to remove that as quickly as possible and really get change their perspective to why they need to be a part of your program in the long term and that that's the only option exactly exactly i actually use that too uh i got a one dollar trip wire uh seven day 30 days free trial and on day 27 you know you're going to learn um website custom audiences really need to know that in order to do this and then it keeps them too because they need to know that so it's just really powerful what's up blair um you want to open it up for any questions yeah you guys if you have any questions if you see the chat box um it's right here i'm a type just let me know and i'll just i'll just let you know if they have questions if you want to add them um, a couple so, of other things just for that, that, uh, success scoreboard too. <laughs> yes, we will. We'll, 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 I'll give you guys a bonus for sure. Um, a couple of things to keep in mind with the book process. Huh? I, I told them they need to stay for that. I actually use that. I actually, <laughs> yes, I remember. Mm -hmm. Um, a couple of things to keep in mind with the booking. If we're still talking about the six weeks and those of you that want to run it or give it another go or anything else. And like I said, I'm, I'm neutral. I probably will never run it again myself just because I prefer to get people into our program faster and convert it into 12 month DD. I just like that because that way it's easier for me to know what my net growth is from month to month a lot faster. And I'm not worried about, having to control a massive volume of people on the front end, the conversion on the back end, right? My personal preference, that's all. Um, but with the booking, right? I see a lot of people using online booking, schedule one, stuff like that for the six week. And I have no issue with, especially with the volume of leads that you're getting. But if you allow somebody to book longer than three days in advance, your conversion rate of them showing up will be a lot less. All right, we've started with a week. We brought it down to like six days, five days, and we found that the two to three day window, we get the highest conversion rate. The ones who actually book in and book the next day, like that almost have a 90% show up rate and around a 50 to 60% conversion rate because they're in the buying mode, right? I've seen the ad, I've clicked on it, I've booked, I'm coming in, I'm ready to go. I haven't let life get in the way and me starting to think about it a little bit, right? The other thing that we found is, and why we used a scheduling program, and I would recommend it for people to do that, is that the follow-up of people who don't show up and trying to rebook them in will drain hours a day out of your life if you get the volume of leads. So allowing them to reschedule their own appointments, right? So if you use a program like Schedule Once or something like that, they have a link that anytime they want to reschedule it, they just click on it, reschedule it. We get a notification. They get a notification. For us, we set up a Zapier with Google Sheets. So it moved the appointment to the next appointment in Google Sheets. Sorry, Adam. I'm sorry, in Google Calendar. Yep. Sorry, Adam. Alex Price asked if you could repeat that just one more time, if you don't mind. Which, which part? Which part of that, Alex? I think it might have been the beginning part. Um, when you first started the booking. Mm -hmm. So only allowing them to book max three days in advance. If that's the part you meant. So reason time being is that conversion. Yeah. The time. Yeah. A higher conversion of show up. Right. And again, the ones that show up are the ones you're going to have a chance of converting with the volume. And let me see if I can share this with you. Can I share my screen? Yeah. Let me take about two hours to find. That's right. I, I can click on it and share my screen. 
Oh, okay. There you go. All right. Can everyone see this? The actual um stats or not? Yep. Can I can you see it up. Can you guys see it? Yes. Yeah. Everybody can see it. Yeah. All right. This is one of my clients, lots of examples, right, of when they've run this at different times. And Alex and, said that, um, sorry, so they need to wait three days? So no, what he's saying is um, you need to contact them within that. ASAP. Week, right? <laughs> no, no, you need to contact them within a matter of minutes, within right? Minutes. For us, we set up Scipio, which was an automatic email as soon as they came in, but only allow them up to three days to book in. Don't allow them to go longer than three days to book in. Does that makes sense. It's all about that initial window. Right. Got it. If you can book them in in an hour, book them in in an hour. Right. Um, it's just not letting them go longer than three days because we find that decreases a conversion a lot. So if you look at stats like a promo like this, right? So you've got 666 leads. You've got 396 appointments were booked. Right. 231, so almost half of those appointments actually showed, all right? Out of what showed, half of them pretty much signed up for the promo. Out of the ones who finished, you've got about 90% that finished. Out of the 90% that finished, you converted 30% of those people onto EFT. It's a pretty standard statistic that I see across the board with this promo. And what I want you guys to think about, if I sent you 231 appointments, right? So if, if, if our arts team go, hey, I'm going to book you 231 appointments that you know are going to show and that you told me you were only going to sign up 29 people from those 231 appointments, one, I would slap you because that's the worst conversion rate I've ever heard of in my life, right? That you're going to sit down. I'm not talking about the six weeks, right? I'm talking about 231 people that you're going to sit down and do a consultation with. If you were only going to sign up 29 of those people, that conversion rate would be horrific, right? Makes sense. It's like just over 10%, right? A typical consultation conversion rate should be 70 to 80% minimum. All right, that's somebody that you're sitting down with, taking the time to get to know, prescribing why they need your program. Even 50% worst case scenario would still be better than 10%. And that's what people forget with this type of a promo because they see, right? They see 117 people signing up. That 117 people paid me 400 bucks, right? Cha-ching, awesome. But if you look at how many people ended up on direct debit, it's pretty crap. Do you know what I mean? And depending on when they started, it took them six weeks or longer to become a client on EFT, right? And this is what people don't realize. I'm marketing it for three or four weeks. Then I'm waiting for the conversion process. I'm not marketing anything else during that period. So I might have gone six weeks without signing up a single member on EFT, on direct debit, right? So when I divide that period, Let's say it took six to eight weeks, so two months. I've only signed up 15 people each month on direct debit from 231 people that you sat down with. All right, so when you look at the numbers, that's where you can make the best decision in terms of is this the right promotion? Because like I said, it's distracting on the front end. And I'm not saying it in a negative way, it's just looking at it in a numeric and a statistical way, right? Like. If I could give you that many leads, and we know that the free hook is why you get that many leads, right? But even if you got half of that and still converted at 50%, that would be 50 members minimum that you would be converting straight away onto hopefully your 12 month programs, All right. So be aware of that with this type of a promotion. And then when we were talking about tracking your show up rate, making sure that with that booking process and the rescheduling and the lead follow-up, if I can get more of the people to show who booked appointments, again, that's only going to help me get a better result, right? Because as we can see here, it's half of the amount of people, just over half showed up who actually made an appointment because there's no commitment, right? It's free. I click a button. I book an appointment. That's all I have to do. There's no commitment for me to show up. 
Cool. Any questions about this? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Neil Gottlieb says he's committed suicide if those was his numbers, not his. Is not. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Right. And that's, that's, that's why I like, as a hook, I get it as a marketing process. I get it as a conversion process. There's ways to make it work. But what I've also seen is that I've seen clients who have smashed this, but over the same period of time, they've lost five, 10 members a month, right? Depending on their business, normal rate of attrition, sometimes for larger groups. So they're down 20 members and over an eight week period, they only signed up 29. So their net growth is nine members in two months. Right. But people don't look at those numbers. They look at the leads. They look at the cash flow coming in the front end, front end. but that's the number. That's the key in the back end. If that number is not growing every single month and you're not increasing that net growth on direct debit, you're never going to earn the level of income and profitability that you need. Absolutely. And guys, you got to think about it like this too. Um, what is your average lifetime value of your client right now? Are they a 12 month client or eight month client? And then when you use this offer, how does your average lifetime value change? Does it go up or go down? And in most cases, it goes down because the type of people we're getting in are, are normally not the type of people who, who would normally stay. And, and they might get in and you might sell some of them. And some of them, most of them won't show up because typically when you get a free, per, free person, a free offer, you're going to get a, a free type of person. And $1 is going to be too expensive. Um, it is so hard to give them that much value to where the cost of the services is, is, is less than the value that you give them. And exactly and right. And if, if you're converting them, not even into a 12 month program, it's going to be even trickier for you again. Yeah. Turnover is sanity. Profit is sanity. Cash is king. That's what Neil Gottlieb said. <laughs> always, always. Any other questions about what we've run through so far? If not, I will leave you guys with a couple of gifts from my man, Art. Oh man, you, you are so, oh, I love you. I love you. <laughs> Adam, Alex, Blair, Body, BYG, iPhone, of course, Jay Dang, you silent. Jeffrey, Kevin Walker, my man from Newcastle. He's a model, he is a model, model health. Awesome. Um, obviously, MG, you guys don't have no questions, do you? Shirley Surefire and JV. Nope, keep moving. Nope, makes my life easy. All right. Let me share this with you. All right. And it leads on, I guess, for what we were talking about with really looking at your statistics and your numbers. All right. Like as I use this, this is what I, I have something before. I don't use that. I use this. This is simple. It's simple. I've changed it up, mine up a little bit because my business is different, but I use this. This is, this is easy. It's like, I can read it. I can read it far away and, and know the numbers. That's what I want to do. I can close. So, my that's, that's the biggest thing with this and why I created it years ago and why all of my clients use it and the workshops that we run and stuff, we always share it. Now I will give you guys the link to this. All right. This is just a template. None of the numbers in here count for anything. So you can rip it, you can change it, you can do whatever you want. All right. But the main reason why it exists. All right. And whenever I look at a new company or I have somebody I'm looking to work with, um, these are the key questions that I always want to ask them, right? And the way that I look at it is if I was going to buy your business, I want to see how healthy your business is in one picture. I want to get the entire picture in terms of what the, the journey has been like from month to month, what your cash flow is like, what your key numbers are on a consistent basis. And the reason why my clients like it so much is because it's the same thing for them rather than trying to look in 50 different places for that information. Most of them by now have an admin person or somebody who fills in this information. And then we look at it together on a week to week, month to month basis to just see where we are at between our marketing, our cash flow, and our profit. All right. So, like I said, you can adapt these things with the different columns here. All right. What I tend to recommend is that on the right or the left hand side, you put your projections in there. Right. So, what's my target for the month based on what I want my net growth number to be? Right based on what I want my current cash flow or my number of members to be over the period. So it's pretty simple. You got number of leads, consults, signups, cancellations. What was our net position in terms of members we gained and lost? And then what's our total members cash flow? Pretty straightforward. What's our average dollar per member, All right, Huge number. 
especially if you run the type of model where you've got large group, small group, one-on-one, -on -one, whatever else it is, right? Depending on how many you've got in each program, divide the total number of, uh, divide the total income by the total number of members will give you your average dollar per member. The reason why that's such a critical number is that a lot of people always focus on more, right? But what you got to realize is the people that are with you, they already know, love and trust you. Often a lot of them will be happy to pay you more than they're currently paying you if you had a higher tier program, right? That way I can earn more from my current clients without adding anybody else in, right? Or I start creating higher price programs. Now I can have less members that bring me more money, right? Higher margins gives me more profit. All right. And being able to track that is key because I have a lot of businesses I work with and help them implement higher value, higher price point programs and watching that average dollar price point go from like $39 to $59 to $60 with the same or similar amount of members. That's the key part. And watching the margin and the profit go up, that's where things get exciting, right? It doesn't always have to be about volume. Sometimes it can be about less that pay you more. It's a much simpler model to handle. Cool. Obviously you got break even. So the way the tabs work, everything formulates back to here. You can add it. All right. Cash flow, break down the different income categories you've got coming in. You've got total outgoing. And then obviously you've got your profitability. We have changed from next month so we can see how profitability is going longer term. You've got your revenue streams. So breaking up each of those revenue streams, if you want to any upfront stuff you got coming in upfront memberships, other capital, if you've got to, if you get money from clothing, supplements, anything like that, you can add it in, outgoing, pretty straightforward, right? All of your expenses. And look, some of you might have things in zero. Some of you might have things in QuickBooks, everything else. So you don't necessarily have to have all of this in there, but I would make sure at some point that you can put all of your information on something like this, right? Most of my clients have it on a whiteboard in their office, all right? So that at any point they can turn to it and know exactly where they're at where their business is growing and how close they are to their target for the month. So we're always focused on growth rather focused than on reaction. Like, Oh shit, I didn't sign up enough people. Or, oh shit. I lost six clients. What am I going to do? Cool. So all right, so, I should be able to put the link to this in the comments. All right. Let me see if I can work that out. Whoop. Sorry guys, I'll stop sharing and then I will put it in the chat. Could you go one more time back to that success scoreboard real, real quick? If um, you're lucky. Ah, please. Yes. There you go. Thanks. Here's the link guys in the comments um, and you can, you can steal it and download it. We all like stealing. Scroll to the left just a little bit and if you guys uh, look at the very top, so basically on the left, his the goal was, that's the goal, right? 500 leads is his goal. Yep. And then on the right, that's what he got. In the example, he got 41 leads. So you can see your difference in your goal to what you actually get at the end of the month, at the end of January. And then the number of consults, trials is 50. That's what he wants. He wants 50. And then he got four and then he sold all of them. He wanted to sell all of them and he sold all of them four and four. And he projected that he only going to have one cancellation and he only had one cancellation. And, um, it, and, it, and it can be put into a formula so that it rolls over to the next month. Current members. Is that right? Uh, yeah, current members will relate to um, revenue. So if you look at the revenue stream here and you've got the amount of people that are paying you on each, so even here, like the amount of people that are paying you on each equates back to the total number of members, which then lets you know what cash flow you've got. So have a look in there. Those of you who are familiar with formulas, if you're like me and you just avoid that shit altogether, outsource it, get somebody else to do it, right? Numbers, I understand I can read and I can interpret all day long. Creating this stuff is not me, all right? So if it's not in your wheelhouse, copy this, change it, get somebody else who's good with that stuff to do it for you for sure. But uh, like I said, those numbers don't mean anything that are in here. They're just there to give you guys an example and some context. But what Art was showing you was part of the process. So we set the monthly targets, 
but on a weekly basis, you're coming in here and you're updating where you are in relation to that target rather than waiting to the end of the month and go, oh, we didn't hit our target this month. What are we going to do next month, right? I want you to know from week to week, hey, I got, we were meant to have 10 appointments this week. We got two. Let's hit our app and go, hey, buddy, we need more leads, all right? Or let's start getting in touch with old leads. Let's start getting in touch with more follow-up of the leads that are coming in, right? To try and guarantee the result that we want right there and then, not wait to the end and realize we didn't get it. So it's coming from a proactive point of view rather than a reactive point of view, which as a business is the key to make sure that we're always getting consistent growth. I love it. It's beautiful. And you guys can hit me up and say, hey, Art, um, this, is where we're, this is where we are, this is where we need to be. We are hitting our target cost per acquisition, but let's increase our budget by uh, 200%. Because currently where we're at, our targets is you know $4, four pounds cost per lead. And right now we're at that. Let's increase it 200 so we can hit our goals. That's what we want to do, baby. That's and that's do. the thing. If you know your numbers and you know you're getting a return on investment for your marketing, right? It's a lot easier to increase your budget. It's a lot easier to make an educated decision rather than I've got my $500 budget and you just sit back and you wait. And then you wait at the end of the month and go, hey, all right, we didn't get the amount of leads this month. Okay, what did you do about it? <laughs> you know, like, how often did you email the person that's looking after your account? How often did you get in touch with old leads and how often did you follow people up? Right. My rule for follow up is follow up until they tell you to fuck off. Right. <laughs> because at the end of the day, they've inquired for a reason. It's your job to make sure that you get in touch with them as frequently as you can. And if they don't want it, they can tell you to fuck off and move on. I love it. All right. Guys. Hey, welcome Ronan. You're a little late, but we got to <laughs> in Western replay. Yep. You got that replay. I'm a blast to email off to everybody. Thank you guys so much for coming. I'm going to blast the email off to y'all and, and I'll send you the replay as well too. And of course, thank you so much, Adam. I appreciate you waking up early for me. I really do. My pleasure. And look, guys, if there's anything I can do, you have questions, stuff like that, reach out to me through art, connect with me on Facebook. I'm always happy to help. I'm not one of these people that don't help because I don't feel like I, I should. All right. I connect with people all over the world every single day. So if there's something I can do to help you or give you a fresh perspective or look at your current business model and, and give you, you know, my two cents, I'm always happy to do that. Yeah. Adam is an awesome guy. I am. Um, he's, he's from Australia. He was, you're in Arizona now though. You're in the yeah, state. Yeah, based in Arizona now. Uh, yeah. I'm also an investor in, in two of his facilities in um, Arizona as well too. So he knows his stuff and you guys know it. After 22 years, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate y'all for coming. Josh, Kevin, JV, Neil, Ronan, Shirley, Blair, Alex. And um, I'll be speaking to y'all very, very, very soon. Awesome. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks, Art. Thank you. Thanks.